we're live. I, YouTube gives you this little notice. It's like, you're live, exclamation point. And it so makes, me wanna, makes me want to say it every time. Um, hello, I'm Barrett. This is Nathan. This is episode 007. Oh, God. <laughs> Of the I knew you were going to do that, creators. It, and it's still painful. Uh, listen, my wife told me that I got to incorporate more dad jokes and personality because it'll keep people entertained. So here we are. Now you get more dad jokes. Um, That's right. Really, though, this is episode 007. Uh, we've been at this now for um, this is our second week. We're halfway through our second week of this. And uh, the topic today is going to be focused on how to change your business model when you need to change your business model fast in times of uncertainty and change like COVID-19. So we're going to use the current environment as kind of inspiration for how we've seen some businesses transition really quickly um, and how we would go about transitioning some businesses that we know might be in a tight spot right now. Um, if your business is in that spot, then hopefully this will be useful. And if it's not, Think about times in the future when you might find yourself in a different situation that requires you to change quickly, where the same kind of thinking might be useful, even if it's not right this second. Um, so that's today's topic. Nathan, how are you doing? Um, I'd say I'm green at work, maybe red on the personal side. Um, just talking to more and more family members who are deeply impacted by uh, by all of this um, on the economic side. And, you know, uh, my stepdad's in the hospital right now for something entirely different and there's no visitation, which makes sense, but also for this extended hospital stay, it's gonna make that really difficult. So that's what's going on there, but lots of things to be excited about on the work front. And uh, actually just jumping on this podcast, like always gives me energy. So yeah, that's uh, that's the balance extreme on, on both ends, but uh, yeah, how about you? Yeah, same. I found that um, on my least productive days, if I'm really having a hard time getting into the work, having this set midday means I got to show up. And when I show up for this, I find that I can sometimes get in a flow right afterwards. And that's been happening pretty consistently. So I've been enjoying that. Um, I mentioned yesterday that the weather is a little more glum here in Portland. Um, so I've been a little bummed on that. I haven't been able to get outside as much. It's actually quite cold right now as well. Um, but generally speaking, I feel like maybe we're settling into just kind of like, okay, this is the new reality. Um, I don't love it. I definitely don't want to go out very much. And so I get, I've noticed my anxiety levels raising when I have to go out or interact with people for an essential reason. Um, but overall, you know, our family's good. Uh, fun little anecdote. I, I actually, no one may care, but I'm just going to share it anyways. My two of my aunts, my mom's got three sisters. So there's four girls in her family. Two of my aunts came in town to meet our newborn son, who's uh, four months this Sunday uh, in January, I think, late January, maybe. And when they were here, they asked what they could do for us. And we don't really need anything. Like we've got all of the furniture and stuff that we need. I'm, I'm an essentialist when it comes to stuff. I want just the right amount of stuff to live a good life. Um, and so what we said instead was, hey, could you actually pre-prep a bunch of meals for us? and put them in the freezer. And so they looked up this paleo cooking site that specializes in this perfect business idea from yesterday. Paleo site that had a blog, multiple blog posts specializing in freezable meals that you could drop in a crock pot. And so they made us like, I don't know, 10 meals that have been in our freezer and we ate the last one last night. It was delicious sweet potato chili. Um, but I was just sitting there thinking, you know, like what an awesome gesture that was from them uh, to do that for us. And we've it sustained us, you know, a couple times a week for uh, five or six weeks now. So anyways, I'm grateful for little things like that right now and trying to find the joy in little stuff um, to keep me on the up and up. That's pretty awesome. And yeah, that's a great example of a very niche site that I could see having a following of hundreds of thousands of people. Especially for busy parents and working people and everything. That's just so nice to drop something in a crock pot every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Especially if that's it's good. delicious. Um, all right. Well, obligatory check-in on the depressing state of affairs related to coronavirus. What are the numbers today, Nathan? Oh, let's see. I close the tab. Let me open it. Um, the governor of Idaho in, I think, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes is supposed to make an announcement. They haven't said what it is, but I'm guessing it's going to be a shelter-in-place announcement. 
Yeah, we uh, invited him to go ahead and do that on our live stream. And for some reason, he felt like the audience wasn't targeted enough. So, you know, I guess he'll do his own thing. Yeah, you know, government officials, you can't get them to get with the times. Obviously, this is the place to be, but what are you going to do? All right, your numbers overall, 454,000 total cases, uh, 61,000 in the U.S. Um, looks like tomorrow's the day. Maybe the, maybe the next day is when we pass Italy. It's tomorrow or Friday, Saturday at the latest. And yeah. uh, both Italy and the U.S. will pass China in that same time period, so. Yeah, it's not good. I'm just going to continue harping on the same message I've said, which is that uh, the fastest way out of this is through. And the fastest way through is stay at home, take care of yourself, um, really avoid going out as much as possible. And if you feel any symptoms at all, go through the rigmarole of getting tested so that you have certainty. Um, but the best way to take care of this is to take care of each other and make sure that we're, we're doing our little part out there. Yeah, um, for sure. Okay, so we've got a, a timely but um, also timeless episode, I think, about how to change your business in response to changing circumstances. And we've got a little list here of some businesses we've seen do this really well. Um, and we've also got a little list here of businesses we think could use this in times like right now. Um, we're going to share some ideas about how they might adjust to continue really with the focus on continuing to earn a good living during a really uncertain time so that you don't just have to curl up in a ball and wait for it to be over. Um, yeah. So let's jump in with the first one, maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing is, well, the first thing that closed here in Idaho was uh, dining rooms, restaurants, uh, and bars. And they closed those, uh, you know, a week and a half ago, something like that. Because um, Idaho is kind of lagging behind everywhere else as far as number of cases and, and response to it. Um, you know, and so obviously the thing that all these restaurants are doing is going to take out, um, going to those models. Um, we got some takeout the other day, I see maybe a week ago. And I really appreciate that they had the door propped open. You know, it was all these little things like you didn't even have to touch anything besides like get your food. And that was it. Um, but one thing that was interesting is my friend Patrick works at a craft, um, cocktail place, uh, here in Boise and they've won awards for, you know, having some of the best cocktails in the state and all that. And they talked to the alcohol regulator here in the state and found out that they actually can bottle their cocktails. And so long as they seal them, then they can sell them. And so that was fascinating of how quickly they went from, okay, here goes our whole business to, oh, we can do takeout on cocktails as well. And so I thought that was a fascinating example. I want to check in with them now that it's been a week or so uh, as to how it's doing. But, um, you know, I saw that email go out and uh, they're intrigued by it. And it might be one of those things that sticks around, um, you know, after all of this. Yeah, totally. One of the things I also loved seeing from a local restaurant was um, almost everywhere here in town in Portland, Portland runs on small businesses. I mean, restaurants and cocktails and coffee are what, you know, there's no tourism here. There's like outdoors and then there's little cool shops and restaurants and cocktail bars, basically. Um, almost everyone laid everyone off pretty much immediately. And in a lot of cases, that was the right move so that people could go ahead and get on unemployment and get out and ahead of the um, big influx there. And then ideally they'll get hired back later, but in order to get hired back, these businesses have to make it, they have to keep cash in the bank long enough to just pay rent and the essentials, um, between now and whenever they can open back up because you've got the owners as well, who in many cases with restaurant and food establishments, they're not big pocket type people. They're people who care a lot about the food or the drinks or whatever, and they got into it for that. And so they've got to make it too, and they've got to figure out how to make money. So a couple of restaurants here in town did a couple of really smart things. The first thing was um, they, after laying off their people, they kept the essential kitchen staff and they went to a one dish a day menu. And so it was like amazing food, but you could only order one thing and they did one thing really well every day. And so they limited their cost by only having to buy a limited number of ingredients and they just made it super simple. And so a lot of them were just doing like message me on Instagram, pay me by Venmo. And it was just the grittiest, scrappiest way to get delicious food out the door in the hands of people who wanted to support them. And I love seeing it because it creates a little bit of a template for something they could do later in a more refined way, but it also just gets cash in the door right now. And that's the most important thing um, to stay alive so that they can employ people again at some point. Um, I love that. The other thing I saw was there's a local coffee company run by a couple of my buddies here called Good Coffee. 
And they've always had, uh, well, always for the past couple of years, they've had a roastery where they roast their own beans and that's what they serve in their shops. And they've had an online business presence. And I just had lunch with the loaner, uh, the loaner, the owner, um, I don't know, six weeks ago, right before all of this came in. And we were talking about e-commerce being this big new opportunity for them that they can, they need to kind of try and figure out. And so for them, they were already kind of set up where they could sell beans and um, bottled drinks online. They just weren't focusing on it. And so this provided the impetus for them to say, all right, we better ramp this thing up because the shops aren't doing the same kind of revenue, even though they can do to-go stuff. Um, So let's get going on the e-commerce thing. And so it was interesting to see that there's a big difference between being set up to take advantage of this. Um, And I say take advantage in a very businessy kind of way. I don't mean take advantage of anyone. I mean, more like use this as an opportunity rather than something to be fearful of. Um, And then there's the businesses who really just have to get scrappy and respond the best they can. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing in a lot of places. And I love that you clarified the take advantage because I think that the overall point that we want to make as you're, as you're looking to make these changes in, in your business is that it's not a zero sum game. If you get, you know, your job is to keep your business alive and, and to um, push forward and to innovate. And in doing so, you're not taking anything away from somebody else. So when we say take advantage of or act quickly or that, that kind of thing, it, it's actually benefiting everyone else because then you'll have money and you'll be spending you know, these other businesses and, and the economy will uh, function. Whereas right now, you know, or you'll be this voice and this movement towards bringing the economy back to life rather than everything slowing to a halt. Um, but I like that of it being like this forcing function for people that, you know, want to be making some of that pivot. Um, anyway, you mentioned the kettlebell studio that, um, you know, you've been going to and that them getting classes online, you know, but, um, Mark, one of our teammates was talking about the yoga studio that he goes to and, and teaches that as well. Um, it going and creating, like getting their online courses done and getting them done really quickly. Like how long does it take to make a course? I would, if someone like my gut feeling would be like, oh, it takes a month, you know, if you really focus on it, you could do it in a month. But like, honestly, if your business depends on it, it takes like three days for the first version, maybe, maybe even less, you know? So yeah. it's like creating this whole other revenue stream, actually tying into um, the episode from the other day on um, the ladders of wealth creation, you're actually, right. If you're doing in-person classes that you have to teach, that's on one ladder. And then if you're like, okay, this disappeared overnight, I have to start doing something online. There's a version where you're still doing classes and they're just virtual. And that's one move. But the other move is where you have a course or you have a product that you start selling. And then it's like, oh, you actually just jumped ladders and you didn't want to jump ladders then, but you had this outside forcing function to say like, okay, you have to do it now. And so being quick and agile, you can make that happen. Yeah. And so one way to do it is to create, you know, one positive outcome from all of this is that you might be actually creating assets that can continue to be a part of your business on an ongoing basis. Um, And so you look at a yoga studio or uh, my kettlebell studio, what they did was they already had an online platform where you have an account and you sign up for your, you know, one month, three months, six month membership or buy classes one off. And so that's how you register to go into the gym. Um, and so what they did was they just transitioned that to online classes instead. And again, super scrappy. Uh, the owner created a Zoom account. Whenever someone signs up for one of the online classes each day, the live one, she hand emails a Zoom link to them. Um, I've refrained from saying all of the ways she could automate that just because I know it's already so stressful right now. Um, so she sends a Zoom link. People hop on at the right time. And so they're making the same amount of money per class attendee as they would be with physical in-person classes. Okay. The other smart thing they did was they rented their kettlebells to people. So they like cleaned them all up with um, bleach stuff and everything. And then if you came in early enough, you could rent a bell for the amount of time that you're going to need to keep it while the gym is online only. I thought that was super smart. So you're using your assets and getting them money making. Um, the third thing they did was they made all classes free for people who have been laid off or who are in need right now. And so they said, we're not going to prevent you from being able to work out at a time that's already hard enough. And so they're adding that goodwill element to their business as well. And then the very last thing they did was if you can't make it to one of the live recorded ones, they added, um, a recorded body weight, uh, workout and a recorded kettlebell workout. 
So if you don't have weights at home, you could just watch the video and go along with them at any time during your day. And that was just a private YouTube link that you get emailed when you sign up and pay or a body, uh, body weight version or a kettlebell version. And so they overnight, basically, they went from all in person, all the time, heavily community oriented to online only, everyone working out from their home, um, online option or in whatever you call it, together options or solo options. And I think the uh, solo options might be a really good option for them on an ongoing basis uh, because some people just can't make it into the gym, but still want to work out. Uh, so I'll be really interested to see if they adjust from here and, and continue to leverage it. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's that, that quick, the quick action of diving in and saying, okay, what can we do and making that happen? I mean, we've seen some of that happen on our own team. Uh, we were f- flying uh, photographers and a film crew around to shoot all these stories. And we immediately went, okay, we're not, we're not doing that anymore. We're not making more films. So what, what can we do? And our team immediately went to, oh, but we can tell stories over a podcast. And so uh, Isa and the rest of our marketing team are coming out with a new podcast, making that same pivot. Uh, there's another example that I want to show. You know, I threw this out on Twitter um, of just asking what companies have made a pivot. And this events company came up. And basically what they do is they rent out um, uh, like, I'm trying to, now trying to think of the word, um, photo booths and things like that for events you know, parties, um, all of that kind of thing. And they immediately saw their business disappear, right? It's not coming back. Everything's canceled. And so they pivoted really quickly and did this thing called keep your city smiling. And basically it's uh, a series of gift boxes for each different city. Um, and you can watch, they have a good video here, but, um, basically packaging up some of these favorite items for each city and then letting either a business uh, create their own gift box that people can buy to support them. Um, or, you know, doing a compilation from a few different, uh, cities or sorry, a few different, um, small businesses in that city. And I think it's really cool how quickly they pivoted, pulled that together. Um, you know, like the Seattle box here is $75. You can, um, buy that and get whatever items are in there and support those small businesses. So they immediately went, okay, this isn't a temporary thing. This is, like our business could disappears completely if we don't change something and they didn't just shift it online. They changed their business model and launched something new. And it'd be fascinating to see like, if this is just something, a moment in time, like they do this for this period, then they go back to their old business or if maybe this turns into something that's even bigger than what they had before. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, I was having a conversation with a buddy the other day who you know, events, events have been ravaged by this whole thing because they were the first thing to go basically. Um, you know, it kind of started with the bigger conferences. There was a, a healthcare technology conference that got canceled down in Orlando. My wife was supposed to go to South by Southwest, ended up kind of getting bullied into canceling by the city of Austin. Um, and then it was just waterfall effect from there. And obviously they're big groups of people. I was just reading an article today that they think that a Champions League game in Italy uh, for the tournament was actually gr- like the ground zero for why it spread so fast in oh, that wow. area. Okay. And so there's good reason for why these events have been canceled, right? But as an event organizer or any contractor who relies on events, um, you've got a big problem, right? So one of my friends, one of our friends is a speaking coach. His whole job is to work with speakers to help them give the best talks of their lives every time they get on stage. Well, as soon as speaker contracts end up drying up because event, events get canceled, it has this downstream effect all the way through. And so you get slide designers and speaker coaches and everything else who have their contracts canceled because the speakers aren't making money anymore. Um, I was having a conversation with him and he was really worried about it. He basically saw his entire revenue runway for the rest of the year go gone overnight. It's the equivalent of being laid off. And I said, all right, well, um, that sucks. Like that's a really hard spot to be. And I just want to start there. You know, it's really tough when your business dries up and, and you, sometimes you got to sit in that for a minute, but, and this will kind of like get into what we want to leave you with at the end of the day, you can't just curl up in a ball. Um, when you're an entrepreneur, one of the hardest things, or when you're leading a team, like we are, one of the hardest things is that in the hardest moments, when you want to just cry, that's sometimes when you just have to keep going. Cause you don't really have a choice. Um, And so with a business like that, I got to thinking, all right, well, what would I do if I were in this scenario where I'm coaching speakers 
and they don't have contracts. Now I don't have contracts. And my immediate idea was, all right, what we have to figure out is how does our advice translate to online? Because a lot of events are doing online versions. Um, and I know that as we start thinking out, uh, thinking about our own event, Craft and Commerce, and what we're going to do there, we're definitely considering online as an option there as well. And if we do that, we'll likely still pay speakers. And so that means that revenue is still there for a lot of those people. Um, so how does a person give a great talk that doesn't just feel like a webinar, that doesn't just feel like a crappy little, you know, recording in their bedroom, but that delivers the same quality of impact uh, on the listener, even though they're from afar. That's a teachable thing. That's something that you can make a course about. You can create consulting services around. Um, it's the kind of thing where you could very quickly pivot from, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching over here to, all right, I got to get a course out the door in like 72 hours and get this thing promoted for all the people who are about to have to give online talks that they've never done before because it's a completely different way to deliver. Um, so that's one way I might transition that business. Yeah. And th that makes me think of another one, uh, that my friend Heath Padgett, uh, just shared on Twitter with me is, you know, screen share it. They run, he and his wife, Alyssa, uh, run the RV entrepreneur summit and it's been getting bigger year after year. Uh, this year they were up to 372 attendees and, uh, six days out from the event, they, uh, made the announcement that they're going virtual. And so he showed this photo and you can see from the photo that, like they run a professional event. Like they they weren't messing around. They didn't just sit in front of a webcam. They actually made it um, pretty good. Oh, look, there's a Create Everyday sticker. Love it. Um, you know, and so they actually tried. Okay, here's how we can make the best as you know, the best as we can uh, in this setting. And I think there's there's a lot of people who would want to learn from that and understand. Okay what did you do? What can we learn from you? So, uh, you know, in this case with our friend who's the speaking coach, um, or with Heath and Alyssa who did this with an event, like if they put together like a 4,000 word blog post on all of the details of how they did it, what worked, what didn't, um, what can make an online event special and not just feel like another summit or a webinar or something like that. Um, people would absolutely love that content right now. Yeah, for sure. It's highly timely. Um, it'll be relevant later. People always need to know how to present themselves online in a different medium than, you know, when you don't get the reaction from the audience, you don't have the same body language signals that you can usually get when you've got those live people in the room. You know, there's not the same, like my, my slides are behind me. I'm up here on the stage. Instead, it's all got to be on the screen. There's all these dynamics that change. And, and that's true across a lot of businesses. Thinking about how dynamics change between the normal state of being and the new state of being in the current situation can help you design how you should be altering your business offering to still try and create something of value that can make money. Yeah. So there's this question that we always ask each other um, that our reboot coaches often ask, and it's just, how has this served you? And you're like, what? No, 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 no. No, this is terrible all across the board. Like it is not, you know, there's pain, suffering, economic loss, all of this all, all across the board. And it's like, okay. And then they'll still ask the same question. How has this served you? And so when you th think about that, like, okay, I'm going to step into that mindset for a moment. And I think what a lot of us are going to find is that it forced us to act quickly. And these things that we were talking about, we've been talking about this podcast for probably 24, not hours, but months. <laughs> and so when we look at it, okay, it has served us by being a forcing function to decide quickly and to act quickly and to launch this podcast and to get other things out there. And the same thing with our free plan. We got that out quickly. I think you find all these businesses where they're like going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it must be really annoying to run a small business and to have people like Barrett and I as friends because we're like, you know, you could do a course, you know, you should build an email list. You should do all this. things. it's like, look, I'm so busy running my business day to day that I can't even think about doing any of those things, even though I, you know that they're going to be like improve the business. And so if you're like, okay, well, it's turned into a forcing function to give me time and to force me um, to do some of these things. And as much as it sucks and as painful as it is, you can look at it from that angle of, okay, it has served me in these ways and, and I can make changes because of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Well, if we want to finish up on time, we should move on to creators of the day and resources of the day. Uh, so let's get into it. Mine, I'll kick it off and share my screen. Um, my creator of the day is a custom sneaker shop called OPC Kicks. Um, oh no, I shared my whole screen, but oh well, whatever, you can see the chat now. Uh, OPC Kicks is, uh, they do mostly Nike shoes, I think. Um, I'm a big sneaker fan and I just love artists as creators and they are artists that use shoes as their canvases. And um, they've got a bunch of cool designs that you can choose from. And basically they just buy white Nike shoes and then customize them. And you can order from their collection that they've got here, or you can actually give them custom designs that you want them to make for you. You know, you could do a logo or a team logo or whatever. Um, so if you're a sneaker fan, they're awesome. But also it's just another example of how many different kinds of creative businesses there are. Um, there's so many ways to earn a living and some have more staying power than others in times like these, but sometimes joy is what's needed. And some people find joy in fashion and shoes and things like that. And I think OPC does a great job of kind of positioning themselves for this sneaker fanatic community that is growing and growing world worldwide. So I'm a big fan of them. Love it. That's great. Uh, my creator for today is Levi Allen. Um, the screen share, he spoke at the very first craft and commerce uh, he's an adventure filmmaker from Vancouver, British Columbia. He does all these amazing things. Um, if you go to his channel, it, it's Left Coast Films uh, is the channel. But um, I would check out this video of riding a Walmart raft off a thousand foot cliff or a thousand foot waterfall. It's uh, pretty insane. Uh, that is not a clickbait title. They legitimately actually do it and film the whole thing. Um, Levi's incredible, not just as a filmmaker, uh, but also as a human. I'd hang out with that guy anytime. And he always inspires me to create better stuff. For sure, for sure. He's also um, been on stage at Craft and Commerce. So another one of those that if you want to watch a talk from him about how he makes his work, um, you can find that at, at conference.convertkit.com. Um, all right, resource of the day. Uh, I think this would be from both Nathan and I, and I'm sure the whole world has heard about it and most people do it anyways, but just in case you haven't, because you never know. Um, Nathan and I are huge fans of reading, uh, maybe obviously, but in many cases, especially with kids, it can be hard to sit down and actually hold a book and read it. So we found a lot of, uh, a lot of joy and just a lot of learning from the Audible audiobooks app. Uh, it's been fantastic. And it allows us to read, you know, read, listen to a lot more content that ends up creating shared language in our organization and just insight into how different businesses run, how different leaders think, um, or how history has developed over time, depending on, on what you choose there. So we're big fans of Audible. Hat tip to libraries. Um, there are also actually apps where you can download audiobooks and ebooks from your local library if you have a library card. And I mentioned this as an alternative to Audible, obviously, because right now not everyone has a bunch of spare money sitting around. So I want to be mindful of that. The one that I like is called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Um, and it's another great way to consume books and audiobooks if you have a library membership. So there's a paid option and a free option. Um, use this opportunity to learn and to kind of take your mind off things if you've got the capacity for it. Yeah, I have had an Audible subscription for a long time uh, and went from getting the emails of like, you got to use this credit before it expires. And like, I don't know, a book to maybe early to mid last year. I started diving into it more, um, listening to a lot more books. And then what I found is that I'd use up all the credits and I needed more. And so I was like, okay, let me buy some more. And I found out that you can actually buy them uh, basically in 24 packs and they get really cheap. Uh, really cheap being like $9 or eight fifty or something a credit. Um, so now I've been buying my Audible credits uh, 24 at a time. And um, it's, it's really good. If you just need some joy um, in this time and you want to check out something on Audible, uh, I would check out uh, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. It's like so good on Audible because he does all of the accents, all of the languages, um, all of the stuff. It's it's just absolutely fantastic. So check that out. Definitely listen to some more audiobooks. Love that. Um, all right. Our closing thought today, right on time, actually, is um, remember to stay nimble right now. 
uh, it's a time when it would be really easy if your um, career is falling apart, if your business is falling apart, to just want to curl up in a ball. And that's totally understandable. There's a lot that's very odd and different about the world right now. Um, but if you can kind of stay in the game and keep your head right, you always have options. There are always ways to adjust from what you've been doing to what's possible and continue to, if not make the same living that you've been making, at least make up for some of that along the way. And so our message to you today is um, take the crying time if you need to, and then uh, turn back around and think about how you can adjust in this time of uncertainty so that you come out of it stronger than you were coming in. That's it from us today. Good stuff. See you guys later.